Oops, wrong button. Wrong button. All right, how are we doing, Turtle Rias? What's happening tonight? Uh, can everybody hear me? Let me just go ahead and change my mic setting here real quick. Audio. And I'm going to go with that. Okie dokie. Can you guys hear me okay? We got sound. Oh, there was no sound there? You guys didn't hear that I like turtle button? Oh, that's sad. Okay. Turn the volume down. There's no sound? What? I don't understand. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Hopefully you can hear me. We'll see what happens. All right, guys. Welcome to the Turtle Boy Live Show. This is Uncle Turtle Boy here. Um, I've shared this link on my various social media channels. Uh, Clarence Woods Emerson, my main Facebook page, 25,000 followers, is suspended for like 22 more days. So that's not happening. So I got to share it on. Go ahead and like our pages, guys. Uncle Turtle Boy page. Uh, which has like 14,000 followers and the turtle boy sports page, which has about 5,500 go like both of those, share it up on there. Let people know that we're live. I've also shared it on Twitter. I changed my Twitter handle because at TV underscore Aiden was too confusing for people. It also doesn't come up when you search for turtle boy on Twitter. So I've changed it. My new Twitter handle is at Dr. Turtle boy, because if Jill Biden can be a doctor then so can I. I'm a doctor now. Okay, guys, I'm at Dr. Turtle Boy. Follow me on Twitter. Get at me on that. I'm also at Turtle Boy Phone. You can follow me on either one of those uh, channels. Um, I'm on Parlor, but nobody's on Parlor. Parlor's whack now. I'm at Turtle Boy. It's not growing like it used to, but yeah. All right. We also, guys, got a lot of new shit in the Turtle Boy store. Check out some of the gear we got in there. We got some new Genetti. We got Genetti shirts. We got uh, a lot of Turtle Boy live shirts. We never know and hats and stuff like that. So we're going to be getting a lot of new gear. I think the link should be in the description of this video. And by the way, if you haven't liked the video yet, or if you haven't liked the channel yet and subscribe to it, make sure you smash that subscribe button for me and hit that like button. And uh, yeah, make sure that you are following along with everything and make sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Make sure you're doing all that. All right. So uh, without further ado, am I forget anything else here? Like share the shit. We, you know, the Saturday show is the really big one. That's when we do the freestyle and all that. If you feel like donating to the program, there is a donation button there. That's called the super chat. If you donate, uh, you get, you can write whatever you want. It comes up as like a billboard kind of thing. This is kind of how I make a living now. So feel free to donate if you want. If you don't want to, that's cool too. I still like you either way. All right, let's get this party started, shall we? So the first thing I want to talk about is, uh, let me pull up the blog here. Share screen. Um, okay. Is this the wrong blog? This ain't the blog. Oh, there's the new gear. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about the, the MNA situation, the Mass Nurses Association. Once again, let me pull this up. Control C, Control V. All right. So at St. Vincent's Hospital in Worcester, the nurses are on strike there. Uh, normally I would support organized labor in their battles against management. I think that's, uh, you know, I mean, not reflectively. The thing about unions is that like, I'm not anti-union and I'm not like, I guess I'm pro-union, but I'm not like unions are always right kind of thing. Like I understand that in collective bargaining, right? Like something's got to give, like both sides should present themselves and they have to meet somewhere in the middle. And when it doesn't, you get a strike and then they fix it and then they come back to work. Right. And I'm all for that. I think that's a fine process. And I don't want to get too involved in the, the details of this all because there's two sides to every story, quite frankly. And uh, it's just too complicated for me to be perfectly honest. I don't care. It's not my workplace. So I don't really care. I'm just being bluntly honest with you. And all I know is that during a strike, there needs to be certain kind of behavior that needs to be adhered to. And I would normally want to support the nurses because I think nurses do good work. But then you see how some of these people are acting. And it's because of the, like, for instance, like Jim McGovern and what's her name? Uh, Elizabeth Warren. They go down to the strike 
and they immediately go for the photo op with the workers. Of course, because that's what they do. They don't care about the details of this. They don't give a shit. They're just like, we are siding with the workers no matter what. They could be asking for anything in the world. It could be the most unreasonable thing. As long they are there because that is what they do. Okay. This is what democratic politicians do. And this is how they make their bread and butter. And it, it is what it is. So they go down there. They're showing, you know, look at us. We're striking. And this lady comes along. Her name is Marie Rotaco. Rotaco. Yeah. And she is the pres the vice president of the Massachusetts Nurses Association. And this lady, Francine, who actually commented on the page the other day after I wrote this blog, she writes to all St. V's hospital nurses who cross the picket line for whatever reason. And she starts naming them. I, you will never remember what you did with the money you earned, but you will always and forever be a scab. Okay. I don't even know. So a scab is a strike breaker. Somebody who crosses the picket line, but at the same time, it's a hospital, right? Like it has to function. It can't not function. Like people are going to get sick. People are dying. We're in a pandemic. Remember? Remember the TikTok videos of the nurses? We're in a pandemic here. So something <laughs> like somebody's got to work. No, am I missing something? I don't like, would you prefer if they were replaced by like, some sort of agency that sent in like fake nurses. I don't know, but they're mad at some of their own members. Now, 89% of nurses at St. Vincent's voted to strike. However, over 300 nurses didn't vote at all. And a lot of them didn't vote because they were intimidated to not to vote because if they voted the way they wanted to, it wouldn't go that way. And one of the things that they're striking over is the ratio of nurses to patients. Now, keep in mind, if that sounds familiar. It's because this has been litigated already. In 2018, question one in Massachusetts was uh, basically if you voted yes on question one, you were for setting strict limits on the number of patients each nurse could see. Now, a lot of nurses were against that, were wanted you to vote no on question one. And a lot of them wanted you to vote yes. It No came one by 70%. It was like overwhelming. So they never got those limits. So this has been decided already. So that is, I'm sure there's other things that they're negotiating over, but that is one of their big sticking points. Something that has already been voted on by the taxpayers. So I have no sympathy for you with that. I have no sympathy because this, the, the, the people decided like it's done. I don't know what you want. So anyway, they're down there every day and they're striking and they're, they're mad that these scabs are crossing the front lines. Now, as I said, somebody has got to work. And they're calling these people out by name. They're saying, feel free to add names of known scabs to this post. And then Marie Rotaco comes in and she's naming all these people. Caddy, Reggie, Katie, dialysis, God forbid. And by the way, 75% of ER nurses at St. Vincent's are still going to work every day. 75%. So that tells you something. Talisha, Marsha, James. Oh, look at all these people going to work. Alicia, Jen, John, Kelsey. It's going to be awkward. Like when they go back to work and that's my whole thing. Like you're okay. You're calling them scabs. You're being mean to them and they're posting stuff like this about them. Give her a hero's welcome. They say exactly what time she gets there at. She'll appreciate the love. Okay. She doesn't care what we think. So let's let her see some real MNA love. She's a scab. All this shit. And of course, the rules are be kind and courteous and no hate speech or bullying in the group, right? And so this is literally bullying, <laughs> like this union thug behavior that they have here. And let's be honest, okay? Let's be honest for a moment, shall we? Like, who the fuck do you think you are? The Teamsters? You're a, you're a, you're a union full of chicks. I'm sorry if that's sexist. But at the end of the day, that's all you are. You're a union full of chicks. Nobody's intimidated you. Nobody's scared of you. You're just a bunch of chicks yelling at other chicks. You're being catty chicks. That's all you're being, okay? You're not tough. You're not the Teamsters. You're not like going out there and bashing tires. And maybe you are. I don't know. They were actually posting pictures of like the hotels where some of these scabs were staying at. I heard that they called, that somebody pulled a fire alarm at one of these hotels. Really mature behavior that they're doing here. And again, my tendency is one is to want to side with nurses and all this behavior does is give me reason not to, to side with management. I mean, not even man. I don't feel like I'm siding with management because I don't give a shit about management of the hospital. I care about them as about as much as they care about me, put it that way. 
but I care about the, the scabs. Those are the ones I'm, I'm siding with here. The people that they didn't want to strike 11% of nurses didn't vote to strike. And then 300 didn't vote at all. What about their voices? What about their voices? So they, they want to go to work. They're happy with the conditions. And more importantly, they seem dedicated to their job. So what are you going to do? If I'm one of these scab nurses, this is what I would say to them, right? Keep doing what you're doing. And at the end of the day, when this is all over, because it will end probably within a couple weeks, and there will be some new, they'll get something out of this. The nurses will get something out of this strike. They'll have to get some type of, give something up. You would assume that's usually how this ends. You get it too. (laughs) That's all I would say. At the end of the day, be like, yeah, bitch. Well, guess what? Well, you were out there in the cold calling me names and shit, being mean to me, bullying me, all that stuff. And I was in here getting paid and you weren't. Yeah, we both got the same contract now. So who's the fucking idiot, me or you? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you called me a scab. That really hurt my feelings for five seconds. Yeah. Yeah, what's up with that? Remember that time you didn't get paid for a month? I did. So suck on that. That's my advice to the scab nurses. Keep doing what you're doing because the people are behind you more than they're behind anybody. So anyway, uh, I go down there yesterday and I'm going to, sh- and there, and of course this chick's all black lives matter. I mean, as soon as I see this, I hate you for double reasons because you are a virtue signaling queef who was telling people to stay home for so long, which we know by now, by the way, the lockdowns were completely ineffective. They did absolutely nothing to stop the spread of coronavirus, nothing except ruin your life and ruin your business and ruin your kids. And they did all that. And the same people telling you to stay home and save lives. Yeah, they were out there protesting with Black Lives Matter. And she was one of them doing that. So fuck her. And uh, yeah, they need better, better representation. Oh, they took it down. They took down. She took down the video of her. Oh, isn't that a shame? Isn't that? What are you hiding from, Marie? What are you hiding from? That's what I want to know. What are you hiding from, dear? I don't know. You tell me. Anyway, um, we got some new images here i want to show you guys let me pull this up stop screen share and i got a lot to rant about tonight so hope you guys are ready you got a lot to rant about here all right so i went down there yesterday i went down to the uh let me make this bigger all right so i go down there yesterday and uh, I just see what's going on. And so there's like a bunch of entrances to this hospital. There's uh, there's the ER entrance. There's the main entrance where most people come and go. Th- and there's an exit they go through. They're both on Summer Street across the street from the uh, post office there. And then there's the Bridge Street entrance, which is uh, kind of near the DCU center, if you will. And they decide like there's an entrance there where the employees go in and where like deliveries are made. And apparently this is the area that's like most controversial. Now, as you can see here, when I'm driving by, I see they're just going back and forth. This is the main exit from St. Vincent's Hospital. And they're just going back and forth, just walking in the crosswalk for no reason except to block the entrance. Now, here is the Bridge Street one. This is where the employees come in, okay? And this is where they just greet you and yell at you and call you a scab and whatever it is. It is what it is, right? Well, let me show you a video here that I got of a zoom call of uh, Marie. What's her name? Ritako. Ritako. Uh, and let's see what she has to say about union tactics, what, what she's advising her members to do. Shall we? Okay. Let me get the audio here. Um, all right, let's play it. Like this is to be at the entrance and exits and to hold up, you know, the ability of people to get into the building. We're not trying to prevent people from get, getting again. Home. What is your goal there? Like this is to be at the solution like this is to be at the entrance and exits and to hold up, you know, the ability of people to get into the building. 
So the goal of the strike, she's saying. So this is a this is a private, secretly recorded uh, Zoom call meeting with union members, and she's telling them that the goal here is to block the entrances and exits to what was her phrasing again? What did she say? Position like this is to be at the entrance and exits, and to hold up. You know the ability of people to get into the building to hold up the ability of people to get into the building okay <laughs> i don't know people are saying what's the first word this is just what was sent to me again this is clearly recorded on a phone of a zoom call like this is to be at the entrance and exits and to hold up you know the ability of people to get into the building so the goal the goal is to prevent or hold up the ability of people to get into the building. Okay. So she goes on. We're not trying to prevent people from get, getting in the hospital that need to be there. Okay. So we're not trying to prevent people from getting into the hospital who actually need to be there. That's good. So who are you, why are you blocking the exits and the entrances then? You know, as I say at the loading dock. You know, we're, we're turning white trucks, delivery trucks every day. And sometimes, you know, they may come back around. So they're turning away delivery trucks every day. What do you think is in those delivery trucks? What do you think is in those delivery trucks? Food, water, stuff for patients, medicine. I don't know. Something, whatever is in those trucks going to St. Vincent's Hospital is stuff that is needed there for health care for patients. And she's bragging about how they're blocking the entrances and they're turning away trucks from delivering stuff to the hospitals. Okay. But this is impeding the ability of the employer to do business as usual. We're making it difficult. We so they're impeding the ability of the employer to do business as usual. We are making it difficult. Of course, what is business as usual in a hospital? It's helping sick people get better. So we are impeding the ability of the hospital to help sick people get better. Good for us. Good for us. We really care. <laughs> have to do that. You know, I'm talking about civil disobedience. Oh, yeah. You're Martin Luther King. I'm being called a scab either. And some people don't want to do that. And that's okay. So some people, nobody's ever died from being called a scab. But again, no bullying. Here's my question for Marie. Has anybody ever died from being called a cunt? How about I just follow you around and I just remind you constantly what a gigantic cunt you are? Would would you like that? No, you would probably consider that hate speech. Marie voted for a Democrat, Democrats, right? That's fine, right? Has anybody ever been hurt by somebody who might say on a hidden call, grab them by the pussy? Has anybody ever been hurt by that? No, they haven't. Oh, right, right, right. So words only matter when people she doesn't like say those words. But when she says words and she calls you names and stuff like that, oh, nobody's ever died from being called a scab ever. <laughs> like, yeah, we're just, you know, organ, we're just telling your locations and where you live and what time you get there and urging mobs to intimidate you. But besides that, it's not a big deal. It's just words. You don't have to do that. But we need to be very vigilant and we need to stay focused when we're at the entrances and the exits. We need to have a constant flow, a slow flow of people, just a very tight circle going back and forth. Um, you know, standing on the sides with the picket signs is not really the purpose of an active striking picket line. So she's saying it's not enough to just show up, guys. It ain't enough to just show up at the, the strike with your sign that says you're on strike and just strike. You can't do that anymore. It's not enough. You got to show up and block the entrance of the exits. That's what she's saying right there. That's not a strike. That's thug behavior. What are you doing? That You're trying to stop a hospital from functioning. If you're on strike, we'll, listen, we see you striking. It has the same effect, except you're just pissing people off. And I would urge my MNA member turtle riders out there, and I know there's many, right? Get better leadership. This lady fucking sucks. First of all, she's a boomer. She's way too old to be the president of the union. The fact that I've put all this shit out there and she's still on Facebook tells me she doesn't get it. She doesn't understand how social media works. She's not afraid to say stupid fucking things like this on Zoom meetings because she thinks the internet's private. Okay? She doesn't understand how the internet works. You need better leadership. This woman is a fucking joke. What she's doing right now is costing you people like me. Public opinion. I have the ability to sway public opinion. Sorry, I do. Okay. And there's a lot of other people out there 
who prior to this might have been sympathetic towards your cause. And they see this and you're like, block the hospital entrances? Fuck off, cunt. I'm not doing that. I'm not siding with you anymore. I got to get my, my father there for fucking chemotherapy or something. Oh, no, but you're blocking the entrance. Maybe the medicine didn't get through. I don't know. Unbelievable. So she goes on. When we were doing informational picketing, that's a little bit different. So, like I said, I know that some people feel comfortable with being verbal on the line. You don't have to say anything. And other people are just really getting into it. Um, we, we, we aren't trying to be there to uh, make them feel comfortable. So notice she's like, you know, some people are yelling and horrible things at nurses. She has the opportunity right there to be like, guys, let's just keep it civil, please. Remember, you represent the MNA when you are out there. But she's like, hey, make an excuse for them. We're not here to make them feel comfortable. Oh, and when I see scabs, I call them out. They're scabs. And oh, that's it. You're, and when uh, I see what, management that I know. When I see cunts, I call them cunts. I'm just going to follow. Those Somebody tell me where I can find this woman, please. I swear to God. It, tell me, is she on the front lines, on the picket lines? Let me know. I will literally film. I will go down there tomorrow. And I will just feel myself walking around here, just calling her a cunt over and over again. When I see a cunt, I call her a cunt. That's just what I do. Who are also nurses. It's, it's just something I feel very strongly. I would never do anything to damage anybody's properties. Uh, I, you know, that's not what this is about. But we need to push a little bit. And if that's not your thing, that's okay. I respect that. I completely respect that. But let's hold the picket line tight. You know, walking around the building after you've done your three-hour stint, that's great. But when you're there for your assigned three-hour block of time, and, you know, let's go to the area that you know needs the numbers. And the picket captains will come around. They may redirect you and ask you to go somewhere else. So there you go. She didn't – I mean, this is what – this is such a – um shows you how uh, – uh, misunderstanding she is of how technology works. She really thinks this is like a private meeting. She doesn't understand that the things she's saying are so controversial. By the way, nothing's ever private on the internet, even with two people. If you piss that person off, they, they got receipts too, right? I've learned this the hard way many times before. Trust nobody on the internet. Don't ever put anything out there that you don't want the entire world to see because they will see it. Trust me. So this woman needs to go. You need better representation if you are the nurses and that's fucking crazy. Some of the shit we say, that's all I'm saying about it. That is absolutely freaking crazy. All right. So, uh, any comments on that before I move on to my next topic? Let's see. Cause I don't have that much more to say about that. I'm going to do, a, I'm going to put that in a blog later, but I always like to give people who subscribe to the YouTube channel, the content first, because you guys deserve it first. And I, the YouTube's really growing, man. I mean, every night uh, we have over 300 people the whole time. It's great. It's great. Remember we used to have like a hundred people. Now it's like 300 the whole time. Videos are getting three times the amount of views that they used to. So you come here. We're getting subs like crazy these days. You come here. You get the content first. That's just how it works from now on. Turtle Boy YouTube is going, taking off. We got a bunch of gear, Turtle Boy Live gear in the store now. Get it while it's hot, baby. All right. Let's go on to the next topic. So a couple months ago, let me bring this blog up. Uh, share screen. I want to go to... Uh, this lady. Hmm. Cam Mike. Or do you. All right. There we go. One sec. Audio. Speaker. Test. Yeah, I can hear that. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Can you guys hear me? Okay. All right. So anyway, uh, oh yeah, there's my cash app too. If you guys want to do the cash app, it's uh dollar sign uncle turtle boy. So a couple months ago, uh, a woman named Julie, uh, my good friend, Kirk Minahan from uh, Barstool sports, formerly a WEI. He uh, took a mental health break because he's had a lot of similar issues to what I've dealt with. Uh, as he's a controversial figure, uh, it causes a lot of stress on the job and he's, you know, had suicidal thoughts as well. And he's been pretty open about it. And so he goes, you know, he announced like about a year ago that he was going away uh, for a while for the fight with depression. And then this cunt comes in. Okay. This narwhal, look at her. Jesus Christ. I call her the uh, ginger uh, bee sting Chelsea Clinton. That's what she looks like to me. Good Lord. And she was featured. 
<laughs> Remember we watched this on a live show last year? Let me replay this again. This is um her and Sarah Spain, who works for ESPN, reading mean tweets that people said about them. And then we did a parody of it the next week. Let me uh, play this in case you guys missed this part of this. Ben, of course, mean things on the internet are not good. I don't like them. But it, when you're a public figure, like it comes with the job and all you can do is just block them or get a restraining order. But because victimization status is currency in our society, no, people have to milk every mean thing anyone has ever said to them ever and make it seem like their, their whole life is ruined because of this. We did the thing last week on Taylor Lorenz at the New York Times. It's the same shit. So check this out. I'd like to start a petition for a ban on all links to Julie DeCaro's Twitter feed. <laughs> okay. There she is. Sarah. Let me find some good ones there. You are. You did death with their hockey. <laughs> Sarah Spain is just a scrub muffin. I don't even know what a scrub muffin is. I don't is. either. I love muffins. One of the players should beat you to death with their hockey stick like before you are. Ooh. Cunt. Oh my God. Will she be okay? Is she going to cry? Oh my God. I'm just reading this. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, <laughs> uh, this is why we don't hire any females unless we need, uh, uh -huh. unless we need our <laughs> sucked or our food cooked. Sarah Spain is a self-important know-it-all. Oh my God. Okay. No. Guys, uh, somebody on the internet called her a cunt. Will she survive with her million dollar contract? Um, f this dumb. Oh my god! Holy shit! I thought it's a c word. There's a lot of c words. Oh, yeah. Yeah. not good. I hope your dog gets hit by a car. You. No, not the dog. <clears throat> Leave the dog out of this. Hopefully, this skank Julie DeCaro is Billy Co Bill Cosby's next victim. <laughs> that would be classic. Trust me, she won't be. Trust me. He's not, trust me, he's not our type. I don't. She goes, I don't know what to say to that. You know what you say to that? Mm. Block. That's it. You just block him and it's over. Done. Block. Mm. I have people that do this I to me all day. All day I deal with this shit. <laughs> Talk about cringe. Woo. Um, oh, doggy. These guys. Your boyfriend beats you. Oh, no. Don't worry, she doesn't have a boyfriend. Sorry. Don't worry. Why bring up your own rape in the story? Is it your way of firing back at critics who said you can't get any? <sighs> oh. Oh. I'm That's sorry. Huh? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is just so unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's funny to do this as a parody, like the way I did it. If you're going to do it, do it that way. Just make light of it. Just let them know that they can't get to you. But to these people... Nothing is more powerful than being a victim. It's literally all they have. And Julie DeCaro is not an interesting person. She was working uh, in sports talk radio in Chicago at the time. She has since been fired because her ratings were so low. Uh, and all that she talks about in her writing is like woke sports shit. Like that nobody wants to read about. Like the WN, go to her Twitter feed. Just like the WNBA is really sticking it to Kelly Leffler. Owned. Woke, that's all they do. Not interesting or compelling stuff at all. And there's really no, nobody would ever listen to it. I can't imagine many people listen to them because again, you can find this sort of woke virtue signaling anywhere. It's not, the reason the Tucker Carlson show got such high ratings is because he's interesting. Even Rachel Maida to a degree, like she gets high ratings too because she's, she's insane, but she's interesting, right? She's crazy. That's why people listen to her. But if you're just another whiny cunt on the internet, like, why do I want to listen to you? You're not interesting. What, what do you have to say to me right now that I haven't heard? I could listen to anybody cry about mean tweets. Do something. Say something cool. I don't know. So she, of course, blames her firing on being a woman. And then she gets a job where uh, basically, basically she's a scab. She went to Deadspin. Deadspin is the 
woke version of Sports Illustrated, like the woker version of it. They they got famous off of uh, publishing Brett Favre dick pics. And then somewhere along the line, they became the uh, arbiters of m moral authority in our country. And they've, they basically, they're snarky and stupid and they think they're witty and they uh, call out conservatives. It's all they do. And like, they're hundred percent liberal, hundred percent BLM, like radical leftists, et cetera. Well, about, I don't know, eight or nine months ago, all of Deadspin quit with management. They got into a tiff with management because they weren't getting raises or something. And Deadspin didn't exist for like three months. And then they brought in the scabs. That's where Julie DeCaro is now. She's a scab. She's a Deadspin scab who writes for Deadspin, carries on the tradition of woke bullshit. Uh, Cause God knows she can't get a job anywhere else. She's not interesting enough to, et cetera. And yeah, so this is what she wrote about Kirk when Kirk announced to the world that he was taking some time off for mental health issues. She said, there was zero accommodation from Minahan and his goons for my struggle with depression. And this is what a narcissist does, by the way. This is the same shit I had happened to me when my shit went down. It's just like, well, what about me? What about you? What about me? My, I'm hurt too. My, my depression. Blah, blah, blah. Well, this is the, like, she's like saying this about Kirk. What about my depression? Huh? What about my depression? He didn't care about me. He sent his goons after me. He didn't send anybody after you. Okay. You are a public figure. You have a blue check mark. You got 50,000 followers. People are going to say shit to you when you say dumb shit on face on, on social media. It is what it is. It's the world you've entered in. Okay. I don't wish depression on anyone. And I hope he gets a happy needs. And I know other women can say the same. So she makes it all about her, of course. Shout out to all the trolls who are about to descend on me for making everything about me. I don't care. Here's just one of the times he inserted himself into my life. He's high-fiving his buddies, and this didn't even register with us until someone sent me the link a week ago. I don't even know what that is. But I interview women about online harassment. His name has come up over and over. I hope he's able to do some self-examination as to why he feels the need to treat women the way he does. Kirk doesn't do anything to women. Like, what's he talking about? Oh, yeah. Kirk didn't insert himself in anything. He talked about her self-serving cringe video. So they were talking. He was talking about that video, how pathetic it was. Okay. And uh, that's it. They just, they mocked it. He, he called her a humorless total asshole, which is entirely accurate. It is what it is, et cetera. So anyway, Julie DeCaro has written a book, as it turns out. Julie DeCaro has written a, and published a book. And let me bring it up the name of this book because she i got i got mentioned in the book as it turns out so, so we're going to talk about that i got i got mentioned in the book Let's see. so here is what she wrote about me okay and Brittany de la Cretas, actually we got to talk about her first let me pull up the Brittany de la Cretas blog stop screen share um i think that's how you pronounce its name Hmm. All right. So this is a blog that was published in 2017 on Turtle Boy. Her name is Brittany Delacritas. She wrote for an, uh, uh, some type of publication called Dig Boston. It's like a radical leftist version of, uh, I don't know, Turtle Boy kind of stuff. I don't know what they're trying to do, but they're run by this guy, Chris Ferroni, who my guy Jamal tells me is like a decent dude, but he won't engage with me on Twitter because he's a fucking pussy. Yeah, so they're not, is whatever, that's my beef with him. Anyway, uh, here she is. You can tell her politics just by looking at her, of course. And she wrote a hit piece about Boston, about how Kayla Briscoe worked as a bartender in the State Street Pavilion inside Fenway Park for a decade. When he heard in May that Baltimore Orioles player Adam Jones told Boston media that a fan called him the N-word and threw a bag of peanuts at him while he was in center field at Fenway, Briscoe was not surprised. Well, he says he never personally experienced racism being born and raised in Boston. He says those things are, quote unquote, bound to happen. Okay. So, again, this is just another tired bullshit column about how Boston is racist. How is How does she know it's racist? Well, she just interviewed some guy, and the guy said it's racist. Therefore, it is. This is lazy, talentless journalism. Uh, and obviously, the guys on WEI called it out. Kirk and Callahan back when my, you know, my, my co-host Jerry every Thursday of the Jerry Callahan podcast and Kirk Menahan, they would just 
they love shit like this. This is how they became the number one uh, rated show in Boston, right? Was talking about people like her, frauds like her, exposing them, etc. Well, as it turns out, this woman has written a number of interesting articles before. Like for one, it's called Why I Stopped Shaving My Legs. That's a, literally a story she wrote. She said, I had internalized these arbitrary patriotic, patriarchal beauty standards. So she just lets the legs go. Here's another article she wrote for BuzzFeed. My herpes doesn't bother me. Why should it bother you? Oh, I don't know. There's just something about, you know, mutations on my dick that disturb me slightly. I'm just, I'm not a fan of that. So that's why it would bother me just a little bit. It's just so awful, these people. They're just celebrating the fucking... That, does she even have herpes? Like, what kind of person with herpes would ever write something like that? Oh, they just celebrate weirdness and grossness just because they can, just because they know it'll upset... The, all, all they're thinking every time they hit the publish button is like, what will Ted Cruz think when I write this? Will this piss off Ted Cruz? Because if this will piss off Ted Cruz, I'm going to write it. That's all... No person in their right mind announces to the world, like, yeah, I don't shave my legs and I have herpes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, anyway, what else did she write? Oh, she fought the patriarchy and all she got with these lousy herpes. Another one is, I won't have sex with my husband just to keep him happy. Uh, well, you probably should. Okay. Well, then again, with you, I don't know if you could have sex with anybody to make them happy. But in general, thanks for just letting us know that, you know, you don't care about your husband at all. You're completely selfish and that feminism in and of itself is an inherently selfish social justice cause that really only cares about themselves. Uh, did someone say brown? Eye? <laughs> Here's another one. This is what she wrote about Steve Scalise after he was shot by a deranged Bernie supporter after being radicalized by Bernie's um, disinformation about universal health care. She said the rep who was shot at the baseball game was Steve Scalise. He introduced a bill to relax gun restrictions. Yeah. So, yeah, that's funny. You know, Steve Scalise got shot. Isn't that funny? Um, and she puts out stuff like this. Are you a woman or a femme whose body hair has negatively impacted your professional life or career? So she's going to write a story on that. Another one, she says, we had zero white men on our panel tonight. It was great. Panelists rock. Yeah, fuck white men. They're, they're whack. I wish we could ban white men from attending things. I mean, we can. Yeah, fuck white men. I just texted my husband to apologize for going to hospital after I was raped because it could infect our insurance. Country. Yeah, so she she was raped. Of, of course she was, right? Of course. In, she's married May 20, right around the Adam Jones thing. She got raped, of course. We'll just take her word for it, of course. I, I, I mean, I'll just come out and say it. She was, that didn't happen. That, that was about as real as the Adam Jones thing. I, of course, sexual assault is a big deal. Of course... Rapes happen. I just don't believe people like her. I think they're pathological liars that will say and do anything for attention to make themselves victims. That's all these people know how to do. They've been trained to do it. Again, victimhood is currency. And so this chick is like the queen of it. Uh, you know, she's constantly writing about, you know, my look, in the, look how pathetic this is. Good morning. This seems like another beautiful day to remind you that Black Lives Matter today and every day. If you're white like me and not doing anything to help dismantle the white supremacist systems that harm your black and brown friends, family, neighbors, and fellow human beings on a daily basis, it's also a good day to start. If you're not sure how you can help, let's talk. There are lots of places to begin. Posting a status that explicitly names all of your friends. I believe that Black Lives Matter is a great jumping off point. If it's a step you've never taken, our silence is deadly. Action is imperative. No one can do everything, but all of us can do something. I love you. So the way to fix racism, of course, is to go on Facebook. She, she literally spelled it out right there. This is their plan. I'm going to fix racism by going on Facebook and writing Black Lives Matter. Boom. Done. This is, I feel good about myself. And here's a picture of her breastfeeding just because that would piss off Ted Cruz. So she's going to go ahead and do it. So back to the Julie DeCaro book, which, again, is about women. Nobody's going to read this book. There's literally... The only people that are going to read this book, Kirk Minahan is the only buddy who ever talks about Julie DeCaro. He talks about her all the time because he's mocking her. Like, it's good fodder, people like her. They're they're so crazy that they're fun to talk about, you know? And he his intern, Justin, buys the book. He read the entire thing today. It was like eight hours. He read the whole book. He's the only one that's going to buy this book. 
Okay. Some other liberals will buy it out of pity, whatever. I guarantee my book, I Am Turtle Boy, sold 10 times the amount of copies that her shitty book is going to publish. And mine was completely done independently. She's getting written about in The Guardian and all these. Pe more people will buy I Am Turtle Boy than whatever the fuck her shitty book is called. Okay. And by the way, I'm going to start my second book soon. I Am Still Turtle Boy. Okay. That's coming probably within the next nine months. It's going to be a good one. Trust me. I got a lot to write about that. Anyway. Uh, back to this, uh, let, let's pull it up. Let's, let's pull up the book that she wrote and my shout out in the book. Shall we? All right. This is what she writes. Brittany De La Cretes had a run in with Minahan after they published a piece for dig Boston. Oh, so this is a little confusing at first. I want to social justice warriors have taken over the English language. So Brittany De La Cretes now. When I first wrote about her in 2017, she was a chick. She's now transgender. I don't know if that she means a dude or one of those, you know, uh, panorama sexuals or whatever they're called. I don't know. Or, you know, non-bisexual, uh, whatever they're called. I don't know. She's somewhere in the spectrum. So her pronouns are no longer, she'll no longer be referred to as she or her in writing she will be referred to as they and their. And this is, the, I can't believe this has just been, <laughs> I this is like the onion, the world that we're living in right now, that this has just become mainstream, like this is normal. We would mock these people before as we should because they're fucking ridiculous. But they want to make you believe that, that you can insert they for she and it means the same thing. I'm just waiting for the first transgender person to come along and say my pronouns are n-word and s-word that would be fucking hilarious that would be hilarious because that would be like what would win out in the victimhood olympics here transgenders or black people i think tra I, my money's on transgenders my money's on transgenders <laughs> i'm waiting for that to happen please somebody do it it would be fucking hilarious <laughs> my pronouns are n-word and s-word Please, goddamn, somebody do that. I'm just waiting for that to happen. Because you can just make up whatever fucking pronouns you want. And thank you, Heather, uh, for the Cash App donation. She says, great show. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, so back to her book. Let's pull it up. Let's make this a little bigger. So we'll read this aloud together. Brittany Delacritas had a run-in with Minahan after they published a piece for Dig Boston in 2017 that mentioned, so they is her, after they published, that's Brittany, published a piece that mentioned the often racist, sexist, and generally offensive comments shared on WEI during the Kirk and Callahan show. So right away, that's just filled with untruths. There's nothing racist or sexist about that show. Well, maybe a little bit sexist, but not definitely not racist. She goes on to say, the day after the piece was published, Delacrita said, Minahan essentially had a complete meltdown on air. He called Sam Kennedy, the president of the Red Sox, and John. First of all, Minahan has a meltdown on the air every day. You're not special for getting Kirk Minahan to have a meltdown. He does it literally every fucking day. It's his shtick. You're not special. But these people are just like, oh, my God, I like totally triggered him by just asking him to have some common decency and respect my pronouns. And he had a – so she goes on. He called Sam Kennedy, the president of the Red Sox, and John Henry, the owner of the Red Sox, who then were essentially his bosses because he worked for WEI, he called them pandering vomits. <laughs> Minahan was then taken off the air the rest of the week, but it was just the beginning for Delacritas. I got death threats that were pretty bad. The harassment from that was to the point that I wrote about it for a local weekly, and my editor offered to pay for private security detail from my house. Oh, this poor thing. She's such a victim, guys. Kirk and Callahan called her out for a shitty article that she wrote, and... You know, <laughs> she got she got some bad blowback as a result of that. So she's a victim here, of course. The Kirk and Callahan show then began calling them. That hairy legged uh, began calling them. So them, this confused me at first. The Kirk and Callahan show began calling them. That is her other pronoun. Her pronouns are they them. So she, them is Brittany. Okay, so they began calling Brittany. That hairy-legged woman, and then in parentheses, they, Brittany, 
identified as a woman at the time. This is fucking real life. This is real life. This is an actual whatever. Once Minahan returned to the air and their derision spawned plenty of their listeners to create memes. Oh no, not memes. And blog posts mocking Delacritus, who is openly queer by using the pronoun it. That was me. And openly deriding them for writing about their sexual experiences and having herpes. Which literally, by the way, was the whole point of... If, when you read an article saying, I have herpes, so what? You're literally asking for people to like say shit about you having herpes. You know that's going to happen. That's why you did it. Literally. <laughs> which they've written about, which they, which is Brittany, has written about with eloquence and sensitivity. So she's the eloquent, herpy-ridden woman. The show had high praise for a blog post written by a stoolie who goes by Turtle Boy. Time out. Time out. Okay, this is where my beef is. Look at Julie DeCaro. You can say whatever the fuck you want about Kirk Manahan and all this shit, okay? Don't ever call me a stoolie. Don't ever call me a stoolie. Don't ever reduce me to that. Do I look like a 20-year-old college student who's impressed by things like Saturdays are for the boys and like, here, watch me fucking shotgun a beer? Do I look like somebody who finds Billy Tibbetts to be uh, somebody who I look up to and want to be like when I'm older? Because that's the Barstool world. The other half of the Barstool world is the woke social justice brigade. And if you've read Turtle Boy, you would know that nobody criticizes Huffstool more than I do. Prez, he's a funny guy, but he brought in a bunch of douchebags, pandering assholes who are really no different from Julie DeCaro. Like that, what the, what's the Mexican chick's name there that fucking pretends to be a Packers fan and the Yankees fan? She's awful. Whatever the fuck her name is, Selena. I don't know. She sucks. Ellie Schnitt sucks. I don't think she's there anymore. All these other pandering idiots crying about Dave Portnoy using racial slurs when he was saying a uh, singing a Jaw Rule song this summer. They suck. Willie Cologne sucks. Everybody at Barstool sucks. KFC sucks. They all suck, really, except for the Kirkman and Show and Dave. That, that's it. So nobody fucking shits on. Don't ever call me a stoolie. Don't ever reduce me to that. I'm a 39-year-old man. I'm way too old to be called a stoolie. I don't like Barstool. I don't read Barstool. The only reason I write about Barstool is because I'm punching up. That's literally the whole point of this line of work. So, yes. I expect a full apology for that. So she goes on. She goes on to say that, um, who, fun fact, me, also wrote a deranged piece calling me a ginger beasting allergy Chelsea Clinton. It's so true, though. Tell me she doesn't look like Chelsea Clinton <laughs> got fucking stung by a swarm of bees. Like it went full Macaulay Culkin on her ass. It looks like it. Okay. So she calls... Me a, a Minahan super fan. I don't know. A super fan? More like a peer. Okay. I used to be a fan of Kirk. I feel like I've ele I feel like I'm I mean, I mean, I'm not on his level yet, but I feel like I'm like that next step behind, kind of. So I don't know if that I, I don't think I'm in the fan world anymore. I think I've been like the we're in the biz together kind of thing. I still respect him, but come on, let's not call me a super fan or a stoolie. Get it right. And then she goes, take a deep breath before you read this title. And she re she wrote my title about Britney. It says, feministo journalist who ripped Boston and WEI for being racist, also bragged about having herpes, not having sex with her husband, or shaving her legs, and made up a fake rape story for Twitter points. All of that's true. I didn't even give her a funny name. You think that's bad? Where do you read about the gutter muppet? Or like... I didn't mention like dumping a load of baby batter in her or anything like that. She got it easy, quite frankly. All of this, Dilacrita says, took a major toll on their, which is again her, mental health. Something Minahan probably never considered. Okay. So anyway, fuck her. That is uh, that story. And let me just save this. And I'm going to go on to the next story now. I got to rant about The Bachelor for a moment. This is going to be weird. Because I've never talked about The Bachelor on here, but we need to talk about it. Oi. All right. So I don't watch The Bachelor, obviously. My wife does, and it's fucking awful. She likes the worst shows in the world, and that's one of them. And it's just, this is my, this is what I say about The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Have you ever seen a fat person on there? No. No. You've ne and you never have, and you never will. You've never seen a plus-size Bachelor or anything like that. Why? 
Because anybody can fall in love with a hot person. It's really easy to fall in love with a hot person. It's happened to all of us before, right? Well, maybe not all of us. But it's easy to fall in love with a hot person because you look at a hot person and you can be fooled by lust, right? It's really easy because they're hot. What's not to like? They're hot. So you, you fall for them. And normally you wouldn't if they were bigger. I feel like when they're bigger... Then you like, and you, and you fall in love with them. That's like legit love, right? Because it's not lust. You really like this person. You got to be careful with the hot ones because the hot ones, you always have to ask them yourself. Just always ask yourself, would I love this person? Would I be in love with this person if they were a hundred pounds bigger? Would I? And if the answer is no, then you're not really in love with them, are you? Oh, and that reminds me too. I want to start a new segment. Somebody recommended this. I got to write a blog about it. We need to have like Turtle Boy Life Coach, and I could do it like a segment every week, either Tuesday or Thursday, part of the show. You email me your submissions. Tell me about your life problems, relationship problems, work problems, whatever, and you just ask Dr. Turtle Boy, Life Coach, what you should do. And I and I read them off anonymously, and I give you guys my life advice. I think that could be a nice little segment that we do. Anyway, so back to this story. So The Bachelor. Uh, and it just seems so fake and like everything is just like, oh my God. Like, so all, all 20 of you want him, all of you, there isn't one of you that doesn't want him. Like that doesn't make any sense. The balance of power here is unequal. They're trying to win a contest. This isn't about actually falling in love. It's about winning a fucking contest. That's not love. It's a mockery of love. The bachelor. A fucking joke. And it's so fake. The conversation. And they, you know, we're going on a fucking helicopter ride to have a picnic on an iceberg. Yeah, that's what normal people do. That's how normal people date. Right. Sure. You want to have a normal date? Come over here. We'll have Netflix and chill. That's a normal date. We'll get some Chinese food. That's what normal people do. And then maybe we'll fuck, 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 fuck. I don't know. I don't know if we'll have enough time. We'll see. I'm just getting to know you. So anyway, this season, they had a black bachelor for the first time. And I've always wondered that. How come there's never been like a black or white thing? And I knew it would be awkward, right? Because normally when you have like the white bachelor, like you had a white bachelor, there's like 20 whatever bachelor chicks out there and three of them are black, right? And you know, watching this, you're like, <laughs> I always tell my wife, I'm like, well, I'll tell you who's not going to win. One, two, and three. Those three ain't winning. It ain't going to be the black chicks. He's not going to pick. There's a 0.0% chance he's going to pick one of the black chicks. Those chicks are there to fill a quota. That's it. So they don't want to be like, well, we only have white chicks here. But I'll tell you right now, he ain't going to pick the black chick ever. So this year, this season, they have a black bachelor for the first time. And I didn't see the whole pool, but I'm sure there was more black uh, women than there ever have been before. And why is that? I don't know. But this guy apparently had it down to two chicks. One of them is black and one of them's white. Guess which one he picked? Guess which one? He picked the white chick. He picked the white chick. Not that there's anything wrong with that. We like interracial relationships, Ronnie. We're not like Monica Cannon Grant. We celebrate diversity. So he picks a white chick. But as it turns out, this white chick has said uh, she needs to be canceled, basically. Let me pull up um, the blog I got here in the works here. Some of the stuff she's told you. All right. Give me one moment. And posts, all posts. And edit. All right, let's pull it up. Oh, there's Julie DeCaro. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. So um, the chick he's got down, the chick who he ended up picking, her name was Rachel something. It was with a K. And... This is some of the things that the internet has found out about her. She's also posted QAnon conspiracy theories from pra PragerU. PragerU is a um, conservative media outlet. And as soon as I see like 
they've posted QAnon. This is the most commonly thrown word out there for what I call blue and on uh, these liberal conspiracy theorists. Everything they don't like is QAnon. So I don't know what the hell she shared, but they're just like, well, it's, it's QAnon. So it's conservative. This chick, by the way, is from the South where most people vote Republican and most people voted for Trump. So it's not that weird to have a conservative be there. Now, here's another one she got in trouble for. There's a chick in a MAGA hat there. Okay. Neither of them is her. If Even if it was her, who cares? You can support Donald Trump. Who cares? But she's not either of them. But, dun, dun, dun. She liked it. She saw it and she liked it, guys. Dun, dun, dun. Here's another one. Oh, you got the flag of traitors in the background there, the Confederate flag. Two blonde chicks. Neither of them is her. But again, dun, dun, dun. She liked it. Here's another one. What do we got here? Uh-oh. Cinco de Mayo. But again, none of them are her. Except. Oh, she liked it, guys. She liked it. She liked it. She liked it. Okay. There's another picture of. Oh, here she, here's the big one. Actually, where, where is it? Here's the one she really got in trouble for. The antebellum picture. So I guess they had a party. Can you guys see this? And at the part, there's some type of anti, I guess they, some theme party there a while ago. And they all dress up like they're, pre-Civil War Southern debutantes. This is the thing, right? And they wear their dresses. That's it. There was no blackface. There was no references to slavery. But because slavery existed at the time that anti that women dressed like this, you can't even dress like that anymore. I missed the memo on that one. You're not allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> Can't make this shit up. Here's an, and there she is right there. Oh, my God, guys. Antebellum. Oh, my God. Plantation-themed fraternity formal. Well, guess what? Like, when you're in the South, a lot of the really nice buildings are at their plantations, right? Slavery existed. It doesn't mean you're endorsing it, whatever. You're just like, this is a nice home where we can have a fucking party. And we'll dress up like Southern debutantes, and it is what it is. It's not the least bit racist. So this comes out in February. She gets ripped apart by social media for it. And he had already, I think he had chosen her, but I don't know if he had made his mind up. I don't know if he even knew about this, but she gets ripped apart in the media by it. And the guy who runs the show, Chris Harrison comes out and he's basically like, uh, can we stop? Like, this is not healthy. Like this is not, a good thing to do to a woman. Like she's a decent human being. She's not a bad person. Like she's obviously a moron cause she's on the show, but she's not a bad person. Like, can we not destroy her life over this? Can we not? And this is what he, so he kind of like defends her. Right. And he's like, is it the worst thing? Like maybe we shouldn't destroy this chick's life for that. He was fired. He was fired. This is what he writes. And he grovels to my bachelor nation family. I will always own a mistake when I make one. So I'm here to extend a sincere apology. I have this incredible platform to speak about love. And yesterday I took a stance on topics about which I never should have been better informed, which I should have been better informed. Well, I did not speak for Rachel Kirkconnell. My intentions were simply to ask for grace and offering her an opportunity to speak on her own behalf. What I now realize I have done is cause harm by wrongly speaking in a manner that perpetuates racism. Oh, my fucking God. Oh, my God. I can't even with these people. They're the most pathetic fucking pandering assholes on earth. And this is why, again, this is why Tucker Carlson fucking kills everybody. Because America is thirsty for somebody who doesn't act like a fucking pussy like this. We, they are. We are so sick and tired of seeing these disappointing pussies just fall on the sword and beg for mercy like bitches. That's what he's doing right here. Like a bitch. Just like, oh my God, please. Perpetuate. You did fucking nothing wrong. You saw an internet mob attacking a woman who did nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. But like some shit on Instagram that her friends were in. And you, and they're attacking her. She's the fucking victim here. 
and you're the man and you're standing up for her saying, let's not destroy her. And now you have to apologize. Fuck him. Fuck Chris Harrison. Fuck all these people that give into this cancel culture bullshit. This is a fucking war, guys. This is, and I said this yesterday on the show that I was on yesterday. Cancel culture is a culture war. And if you are not prepared to fight them on their own terms, then you're going to lose the war. I don't lose wars. I win wars. That's what I do. I'll have a stalemate once in a while if I meet a, a foe who is worthy. But I, normally I win wars. So you burn everything. You use their tactics against them. Okay. You call this chick a, a racist? Like, no, she's not fucking racist. You're a fucking racist, you fucking pedophile. Pedophile? How many kids do you fuck? Huh? Yeah? I would ask the person on the Twitter account. But yeah, that guy, the guy tweeting about this, making it bigger. Yeah, you know why he's doing that? Because he fucks kids. Why do you fuck kids? What's wrong with you? That's all you got to do. Just use it against them, guys. Stop playing this stupid defensive game about like, I'm so sorry. Do you think they want to hear that? No. Chris Harrison, how's your job doing? Oh, you ain't got one. You ain't got a job because you got your ass got canceled. Your ass got canceled. Stop it. Stand up to the fucking mob. America's thirsty for it. These fucking people who get mad at you on Twitter, that's not real life. Twitter's a liberal cesspool. Of course they're going to get mad at you on there. Fuck them. Take your dick out and shove it down their fucking throat. And then ask them how it fucking tastes. And they will stop fucking with you. They'll find, they'll go on to somebody else. They don't want people who fight back. That's why they gave up with me. They don't bother with me anymore. Because I don't back down. They want pussies. They want skulls. That's what they want. Give it to them. Thank you, Kimmy. Kimmy says, for never stop, get bigger. We need you. Is that Kimmy? Is that the race car driver, Kimmy? Because this guy, I follow him on Twitter. Uh, he's famous. I think he's one of the guys that didn't apologize to Bubba Smollett this summer, too. If that's my guy, if my fo- my uh, my NASCAR guy. But thank you very much, Kimmy. Um, so anyway. Yeah, this is what they write. So um, anyway, uh, she she apologizes, okay? Because she's a fucking coward too and she's a fucking moron. And I, I don't really feel bad for her now. This is what she writes. She writes, um, "It's a, as I was thinking about what I wanted to say, I couldn't help but think about how sick people must be of reading these kinds of statements, how a person didn't realize the trauma that their actions would afflict upon others. The trauma. What fucking trauma? You liked an Instagram post. In her apologies, she said that fans who didn't understand how her past behavior was problematic should learn from her mistakes. And you, so basically people that are like, girl, you did nothing wrong. No, 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 I did. I did. And we need to learn from my mistakes. Well, what's your fucking mistake? Don't like shit on Instagram? What? What, what did you do wrong? Be conservative? Fuck that. As I was thinking about what I wanted to say. Oh no, she goes, um, racial progress and unity are impossible without white accountability. Oh my God. White accountability. (sighs) What is there? White accountability. This is like, how much can you emasculate yourself? This is what they ultimately want. They want you to make a fucking fool of yourself. You know what they're, this means nothing to them. This apology means nothing to the cancel mob. They're just like, what can we get them to do to debase themselves? How can we get them to make a fool of themselves and dance the way I want them to dance? I'm just going to act, act, act outrage and see what I can get these dumb white people to do. I deserve to be held accountable for my actions. You liked an Instagram post. You, you've convinced yourself that you're this awful person. Or have you? Or are you just saying this because you think the mob will leave you alone? I will never grow unless I recognize what I have done is wrong. I don't think one apology means that I deserve your forgiveness, but rather I hope I can earn your forgiveness through my future actions. It comes one day after a long time, blah, 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 blah. So let me um, play some videos here of what happened. Is this the right one? Let's see. What do we want here? Okay. I'm going to pull this one up. So they have this thing um, and they bring on, is this the one I want? That's the one. Okay. So 
they bring and i gotta change my input here give me one moment audio okay it's been on this the whole time okay all right so first she goes he goes on alone and he's with emmanuel acho who's an nfl former nfl linebacker if you know anything about football locker room whatever you know that like we talk about nasty shit in there a lot of references to anal uh, it's all sex all the time in, 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 in men's locker rooms. That's all they talk about. Especially, and I can imagine what an NFL locker room is like. It's probably the testosterone capital of the universe. Probably not a lot of stuff in there about respecting women or feminism, the importance of gender pronouns. Probably, it's probably one of the most old school masculine places you can possibly be is an NFL locker room. I'm sure Emmanuel H.O. Is, has participated in this. Of course he has. Of course they all have. That's what happens in locker rooms. When men get around each other and they're naked and shit and the juices are flowing, that's what fucking happens, okay? It is what it is. So to be even lectured, that's why every time I see Michael Strahan up there, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me, Michael Strahan? Jesus Christ. Anyway, I'm sure they use the N-word in there a lot. Like, it's nothing like it's... The fact that these people are the moral compasses now is just insane. So they bring, for, at first it's uh, Matt James, and who's The Bachelor, and him. And by the way, after he found out about this shit, he dumped her. He dumped her. I swear to God, he fucking dumped her. <laughs> I, I would argue, I would tell this girl right now, be like, oh, honey, uh, you dodged the biggest bullet of your life because I got bad news for you. That guy, he's gay as shit. He's gay as shit. If he dumped, if his feelings are hurt over this, if he, if he's that sensitive of a bitch about this, oh, honey, he's gay. Wait till you, you're gonna have a, a rude secret in five or six years. You come home, and there's another, the other bachelor's there. Right? You're not gonna like that. Trust me, it's not gonna end well. It's not gonna end well. It's gay as shit. So <laughs> he, he dumps her. And then he's having this talk with Emmanuel H.O. about like, oh, man, so hard being black in America. First of all, you're half black, okay? You're a Rachel Rollins. And it ain't the, it's not hard. Like, I'm, I'm not black. I don't know what it's like to be black. But it seems like there's a lot of advantages, quite frankly, especially the victimhood status. Like, you get to be a victim all the fucking time. All the, like, you're automatically, you have to be believed. Adam Jones makes up a fucking obvious lie. He gets believed. Certain opportunities, scholarships are made for you. It doesn't seem that fucking bad. Uh, the laws fully protect you equally under the law. Again, I'm not black. But it seems that there's no fucking advantage that I can think of to being white. I'm just going to throw it out there. Doesn't seem that I'm waiting for my white privilege benefits, uh, my, white, my white stimulus uh, check to come in. That, that's what I'd like. When do I get that in the mail? How much can I trade in my white privilege for? What is that worth? Oh, yeah, nothing because it has no monetary value, of course. So he's up there whining like a bitch, complaining about how hard it is to be black in America. And then they bring on her. And he talks to her for a bit, and it's like real serious. She's like, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. And then these two have it out. Let's watch what happens during this segment. I think that you know everything up to this point. I think that you know exactly how I feel. I really just want to take the time to say I'm really sorry. Oh my God. And once I really tried to, to put myself into your shoes as much as I could, I really do think that our relationship was very strong and the love that we shared. With okay, so stop right there. Girl, what are you apologizing for? You ain't done nothing wrong. What, what? What? How is he? How has he been victimized by this at all? He wasn't in any of those pictures. Like what? The fact that this man, and this is my biggest part about this. I was talking about this before with somebody, and they're like, you know, like, oh, uh, the race baiting is such out of control. Like, no, no, no. The biggest problem with this isn't race baiting. The biggest problem with this is masculinity, right? The fact that we are living in a world now where women have to apologize and beg for forgiveness for men.
because the man got his fucking feelings hurt. That is the bigger problem here. The lack of ma toxic masculinity, the decaying of it. Back in the day, men should be, I'm sorry, men should be fucking tougher than this. Oh my God, I'm so hurt. I'm so hurt. The chick that I won in a contest, who I chose over a black woman, by the way, she really hurt me, guys. When she liked that Instagram post, I'm so fucking hurt right now. I'm so fragile. Please. And this woman is just, you Google her, the first thing that comes up is racist. That's what she'll be labeled as the rest of her life, is a fucking racist, which you never overcome that label, ever. No matter how hard you grovel and beg, you will always be a racist. That's the first thing that they will mention. Megyn Kelly, the first thing that they mention, always racist. That's what you will be to them forever. Nothing you can ever do will ever change that. And she has become a target. Talk about online bullying for millions of people calling her a racist. And nobody defends you when you're the racist because you're the lowest form of fucking, you're worse than a pedophile. And so they, they come at her and I forget where I was going with this. Where, let's just watch more of the days. Like I'll, it'll come back to me. Hold on. Oh yeah. My big thing with this is like, if you were the man, right? Like you love this woman, you obviously have feelings for her, whatever, or maybe you don't, I don't know. But if you do have feelings for this woman, and if this was somebody that I cared about, right? And I saw millions of people attacking her, I would fucking defend her no matter what. Because I believe that men should fucking, or just anybody who loves another person should protect that person, right? Because you know that they're hurting. You know that like millions of people are piling on this woman right now. You are an internet villain and you know in your heart of hearts that it's unfair what is happening to them right now. You know it's unfair. And instead of protecting his woman, who are at least his friend, right? Somebody he loves and cares about allegedly. Instead of doing that, he's participating in this stunt where she is forced to go on national television and grovel in front of him. And emasculate herself and like debase herself. And you're participating in this. Fuck this cunt pussy asshole. This guy is the biggest fucking flamer on planet earth. Fuck him. There, this should, this is the story. This is the story. Okay. Emasculated closeted gay man wins contest, chooses white woman over black woman. And then joins online mob piling on her. What if she fucking kills us? I mean, like seriously, worst things of like millions of fucking people labeling you that I can't imagine the mental toll that takes on a person. Fuck him. Fuck this bitch ass fucking homo. Fuck him. That's I'm just throwing it out there. Sorry to have my homos out there. Okay. But this guy, I mean that in the the way that, whatever, I'm not fucking explaining my language to you. Fuck you if you don't like it. If you watch the show and you're worried about language, find a new fucking show. This guy's a fucking homo. Goes on. It was very real. So for you to, to end things, I, I realized that that must have been really hard for you as well to where you must have been hurting. And I just wanted to say I'm really sorry for Oh my god, I'm hurting. Not understanding I'm that like, initially. Um, like girl, don't worry about it. It's all good. That's all you gotta say. I'm really sorry that I hurt you. But he's like milking it. He's like, yeah, keep going. Keep going. We, you ain't done yet. Uh, like I like any man in that situation just says to her, like, God, don't worry about it. I see that you're hurting. Goes oh, on. Uh, oh my god. The end how of hard is this on you? Over an Instagram. To sing the woman that you love that you loved bootleg James um, Hart so torn up over hurting you and over losing you um, um, um it's it's heartbreaking and it's devastating heartbreaking devastating it's, it's just it's it's just disappointing This heartbreaking and devastating. This pussy calls it, and and by doing this, by calling it heartbreaking and devastating, 
you're just making it seem worse than it is, which only encourages the internet pile on. And she's here like, please, please forgive me. Or at least just fuck me. Can you just fuck me? No, he can't because he's gay. Sorry, honey. Matt, there's so much more in your heart. I don't even want to... I only want to interject. I can see it in your eyes. What else do you want to share with her? What else do you want to share? Oh my god! Oh my god! Look at he's he needs to be comforted. You fucking pussy, 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 pussy. Oh, soft music, soft music. I can't believe. The people watch the show and take it seriously. <sighs> and by the way, I disagree with Christine. Christine. And look at this, this long, awkward silence. He's like, I have nothing to say. Thank you, Megan. I don't, I think this is legit. I think, well, at least on her part, it is like, she didn't know this, po she didn't want to be the fucking target of an internet mob. Like, look at that. It's, it's, it's very serious, guys. He's really fucking hurt by this. Really, really, really hurt. Disappointing thing for me. A disappointing. Was having to explain to you why what I saw was problematic and why I was so upset. Oh, yeah. That's it's really hard for him to explain why it's problematic. Right? And, and, and that's why it was that's why it was problematic because. I just want to smack this guy in the fucking head. When I'm in a relationship, it means that. I'm committed to that person and commitment for me. Well, clearly you're not. When I'm dating someone is on track to get married. And so when I questioned our relationship, it was on the context of you. We're almost done. Not fully understanding my blackness. <laughs> not understanding my black man in America. What? And what it would mean for our kids. And look at her. She's like, you. Yep. When I saw those things that were floating around the internet. And it broke my heart. It broke my heart. This is the last conversation I thought we'd be having. I didn't. I didn't sign up to have this conversation. Isn't this interesting though? Christina might have a point. The first season they have a black bachelor. This happens, of course. I had to take a step back for you to put in that work that you outlined that you needed to do, and that's something you got to do on your own. And that's why. We can't be in a relationship. Putting, so he's not going to be with her until she puts in the work. What the fuck does that mean? How the hell do you put in the work? What? Put, so basically, what he's saying there is like, I want to see what you'll do for me. I want to see you dance. I want to see you fucking grovel. Like, I want to see you write Black Lives Matter a million times on your Insta meet. You know what I mean? That's what he wants. Responsible for those tears because it's like, on. last one. The last feelings one. that I have for you don't go away overnight. Put in the work, exactly. The work. And seeing you like this hurts. But then I asked myself, like, I don't want to be emotionally responsible for those tears because it's like the work and the reconciliation that needs to be done is, is work that I can't do for you. And I know that you're capable of doing it. And the last thing I want is for people to be calling to have you canceled or people to be calling you out for things i really want them to call you in and i want you to do this work all right so like the, the comment there from username says not even the most pussified male could be like this for real I'll, i disagree i disagree there are so many guys out there who think women want to hear this shit because they see shit on tv like this and they're like this is what they want guys women don't want this they don't i'm sorry women want an alpha male they don't want some pussy like this they only want him because he's the prize in the contest. That's that's it. He's their ticket to stardom, right? But I was like, here's one. I, somebody sent this to me. Somebody, a, a guy wrote this in a message to a girl. You are teaching me to be okay with my feelings and expressing them. <laughs> teaching me how to love someone again. Things that are priceless and more than a pretty face. Yeah. Males, real men write that in real life. Gay shit like that. Like it's insane. Oh, I'll never be that guy ever, 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 ever. I will never be that guy. That's my promise to you guys. But 
Yeah. I mean, I'm old school. I mean, it's like, <laughs> call me what you want. I believe men should be men. They should not fucking shit on women. Like when you, if you're a guy and you see a woman like that, who's that, who's struggling clearly. And if your immediate instinct isn't to protect her, then you're a fucking, you're not a man. You're a piece of shit. That's all you are. You're a fucking piece of shit. You're a pussy. So that's my rant about The Bachelor. All right. Any questions, guys, before we call it a night? It's been a long show, but I had a lot to talk about tonight. Julie DeCaro, The Bachelor, and The Nurses. Yeah, this is no man. Exactly. Where are my cats? Yeah. Um, you'll just be the guy rebroadcasting the batch. Or, I don't know what that means, Robin, but okay. Sure thing. Court tomorrow. Yeah, I do have court tomorrow. If you guys have any questions, ask away. I got court with Big Black Jeffrey tomorrow in Springfield. That should be fun. Wicked fun. Can't wait for that. Do you catch gay? What are you talking about, bro? Okay. Um, everybody's talking about court. Uh, what? That's the type of sensitive. You're right, wrench wench. That is the kind of guy, like the guy that I just read right there. That message right there. That's the kind of message a guy sends you when you know a chick, like for instance, can get you to quit your job after, you know, dating you for two weeks, something like that. That's the kind of message that that kind of man might send. That might like a finger up his asshole once in a while. Maybe. Not that I'm talking about anyone in particular, but it seems like the kind of guy that would do that. You know, the kind of guy that gets his hair cut every three days. What are those guys? Will you update us on the way home from court? I guess I could. I got a long drive back from Springfield tomorrow. I guess I could. Don't ever call me a stoolie, Lila Meeks, ever. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, leave Ralph alone. <laughs> All right, anything else, guys, before we call it a night? Thoughts on Hagler passing? Uh, I didn't – I mean, I don't I, – he was before my time, really, so I don't really have that much to say on Marvin Hagler. I didn't know he was from Brockton either. I thought only Rocky Marciano was. Didn't know that. Agawam's the other way, Mega Mortis. Other way from Springfield. You'd have to go to like Chicopee or Ludlow. That would be more on the way home. Should I wear my tie tomorrow? Should I? I mean, I don't really get dressed up for court because I don't respect the court. When the court, I, I, I got, I got dressed up for the Kate Peter one. Maybe I'll get dressed up. I, I, any excuse to wear the Turtle Boy tie, I guess, is a good, a good thing. Is Janetti still missing? He posted again on Facebook today, so maybe he'll be back. We'll call Jan We took one episode off from Janetti. He's the background. I think we'll survive. Thank you, Cheryl. She says, great show tonight. She sent me cash and a cash up. I appreciate that. I'm not calling Mike Janetti tonight. We'll call him Thursday, maybe. Maybe. Court's at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. All right, guys. Um, so if nobody has any more questions, people keep talking. The old timers keep talking about the Sugar Ray one. You remember that fight? I mean, Tyson was Tyson was in his prime when I was a kid. That's that was my earliest boxing memories. All right, guys. Um, so uh, I guess we'll call it a night, and we will see you all. Yeah. God, hey, the Patriots are serious now, apparently. We just need a quarterback. We'll see what happens. But uh, we will see you guys all on Thursday for the next episode of Turtle Boy Live. And I might go impromptu live on the way home from court tomorrow. We'll see. Peace, Turtle Riders. <laughs>